drive. Fine. Make some appearance stops. Yes, yes, I did. I did everything you asked me to do. Good. Here. Hello, everybody. I'm going to show how to use the 3D camera tracker to uh, do a removal of some objects within an image. Uh, here's from a short film that was shot, and uh, within this uh, this footage here, watch closely. Let me go full screen here as we play. We see uh, this crane shot that's moving up. Um, tracking this guy as he walks up to this other lady here. Now the director, when we shot this, um, wanted these windows darkened out and we couldn't get in the building. The building was locked and we couldn't get into that building to shut those lights off that night. Had permission to use the location, just uh, didn't realize that those lights would be on in the middle of the night. So the director asked, are we able to get rid of these? And one of the post-production people on set said, We'll fix it in post, and they actually meant it, not as a joke. So, yeah, what we're going to be doing is showing how to darken these windows out. We're going to actually take another window and place over these windows. And we're going to use the 3D camera tracker to keep them latched to those spaces right there. Uh, what the 3D camera tracker is going to do is going to create a 3D space. It's going to determine how far these walls are, or what that wall is away that we're going to be putting those windows on. It creates uh, it creates actual um, uh, a 3D camera space where it like creates uh, actual depth within a shot on a 2D image. This is a 2D image. Have your x-axis and your y-axis, and uh, and it doesn't have a z-axis, which is basically depth. Uh, so it's going to simulate that and create that, judged on uh, how this. Uh, it's going to determine that based on the parallaxing of uh, objects within the shot. The wall is moving at a different speed than the foreground. It's going to do multi-pixel track. Uh, to fi kind of figure that out. It's uh, mathematical and it's actually quite cool. So so first of all I'm going to send this to After Effects. This clip here. Save the project file. And the first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to do a 3D camera track of this space. So I'm going to go over to the effects panel here, pull this down and tell it to do motion tracking. And motion tracking will bring up this little track over here. All we have to do to start is click track camera and it will start tracking this clip immediately. Now we'll bring up this little analyze thing, and up here, up here you'll notice it'll start counting down the frames that it does the tracking. This can take a little while sometimes. And uh, by the way, if you have this on full quality, it'll take a little bit longer. It'll do, it'll do more of an accurate track. If you put this on a lower resolution, it will do a track based on the lower res file, and it will do it faster, but it won't be as accurate. So if you got the time, I'd say, yeah, and with my everything running on my system right now with my recorder, this thing is going to take about seven minutes. So I'm going to like that track, and then we're going to come back, and uh, we'll continue it from there. Once this thing finishes, five seconds left here, so I got this on full quality and it's red footage, so it's taking a little while. But this is uh, solving the camera. It'll do this solving the camera. It'll figure out all those points, and it's going to create a little map with a bunch of pixels here, as you're going to find out. Okay. So once this is done here, it's through solving uh, the camera. It's created the camera. Uh, what you're going to see oftentimes is a whole bunch of little points on here. Right now, this is kind of a high-res image, so I'm not seeing a lot of the points. If you don't see them right away, you can go right over to track point size here and grab this and increase the track point size make these little track points uh, bigger. Now what I'm going to do is since I'm kind of uh, putting th this, uh, I'm going to be replacing objects on, on the window on this plane back here on this wall. I'm going to try to find some of these tracking points. If you kind of play through this you'll notice kind of a whole bunch of different little tracking points all over the place. Um, the, the more lighting you have, the higher uh, and and uh, the more contrast you have, you're going to end up finding more points. But uh, I'm seeming to find some decent points back on the window here. What you really need to do is find three good solid points, usually to create uh, a solid plane. Um, and what I've got right here, I've got a few. So sometimes you have to kind of do a little bit of trial and error. But here are actually some right here. I'm going to circle this. I'm just clicking and dragging across several of these. Let me zoom up to that so you can see a target. And what it's going to do is it's going to try to aim a target. What it's going to try to do is try to aim this target. It's trying to figure out how, what sort of a plane this surface is here and how to create this uh, target here. This target doesn't really like this target doesn't really look like it's looking at me too much. I'm going to choose maybe these three. Let's try this out here. See those are kind of on an angle, but this will still work. But you just have, you're going to have to change the angle of the target if you can't find one that has a target uh, that matches up with the uh, with the angle that the wall is pointing at. Let's try a few of those there. And uh, what you're going to do here first is uh, I'm going to select at least three. It needs at least three points to do a good solid track. Uh, I'm going to choose this as the plane of the wall here. I'm going to right click on one of these now. 
and I'm going to create a solid uh, and a camera here. Uh, what it's going to do is going to replace that target with a flat solid and it's created a, a camera. It's added a camera down here and it's added a solid down there. So now the camera is um, the camera is what recognizes the space. It's created kind of this 3D space um, and we're using that information to track the solid. Now when you click on the solid here you'll notice it gives you a few different things. First of all it's got a green arrow pointed up. This represents the green arrow here represents your y-axis. It's kind of up and down your x-axis and this red arrow represents your x-axis kind of pointing uh, to the left and right. And this is your z-axis, so your depth. And right now it looks like it, thinks the wall is kind of pointing off toward this direction, which is not right. So I'm going to first of all try to get this kind of solid uh, facing toward uh, the same direction of the wall. And it's like a little bit more toward me and not off to the, the left direction here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the solid here. And we're going to get that to match the plane of the wall. Usually if you have a lot of tracking markers, it'll do this automatically. But here I'm going to go under our, uh, what I'm going to actually do is rotate the X uh, rotation here to get that Z to point more toward us. Uh, that actually isn't doing it. I'm rotating it on this X axis. So we're going to do the Y axis actually. And we're going to get that thing so it's kind of pointed toward us here, kind of the same direction as the wall. And that looks like that arrow is kind of pointing as if it's coming straight out of the wall in about that direction. So that's probably probably going to do it there, I'm guessing. So uh, I'm going to rotate this X axis so it looks like the same height here. And you can kind of mess with this. You can rotate it all around this axis, the y axis and the x axis, to get this thing to look like it's pointing at the same direction as the wall, as if an arrow is coming directly out of that wall. And uh, maybe about right there. That that should actually do it. We'll give that a try and see how that works. Um, okay, so the next step. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a still frame of that window right there, because I'm going to use this window to cover up other windows. So, right there, that dark window. So, I'm going to go to composition going to go to save frame as we're going to go to, to a file. We're going to save this as a Photoshop file. So right now it's actually saved as a Photoshop right here. I'm going to click on this and change some of the settings here. Photoshop is fine. I'm going to go to current settings. We're going to make sure that this is the best quality and it is full quality. It's going to send out a 4K uh, file size. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to click on the output here and we're going to name it window and I'm going to save that and render. Okay, that is saved out as a Photoshop file. Let's go to the... There it is right there. There's my window Photoshop file. I'm going to double click on that. Open it up in Photoshop. It's just going to facilitate things, make it a little bit easier. Just uh, I'm going to make a still image out of that window there. I'm going to see that window right there. I'm going to hit H for hand, move that over, and I'm going to grab a portion of it here. I'm just going to grab a little square over this, like that. Grab a little extra I'm just going to use my little square tool here, grab a little bit of extra there, a little bit of the brick, and I'm going to go up to Image and Crop. I'm going to crop that out. We're going to do File, Save As, and I can save this really as anything here. I'm just going to save it as a JPEG. Um, hit OK, and we're going to max out the, the file size so it maintains the quality. Hit OK. Close that. You can even do like TIFF if you want to make sure. This is just a small image, so the JPEG is not going to lose a whole lot of quality. I'm going to import that footage. That um, I'm going to import that file. That JPEG right there, that window. I'm going to go back to my comp here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn back on my track solid. And see my track solid right there. You can select. Now you've got to make sure you do this properly. You're going to select this. Have this selected. While the track solid is selected, I'm going to grab my window JPEG, drag it down. And while I'm dragging it down, I'm going to, once you'll have to hold down Option. I'm going to hold down Option. I'm going to start dragging it, then hold down Option, bring it down here, and drop it on the track solid. And it will replace the track solid with the window in the exact same uh, depth, the exact same plane that the wall is in. It brought it in, for some reason it brings it in a really small resolution, so all you have to do is uh, just arrow this down, go to your scale, hit S for scale, and you can increase the size until the window is about the same size. Uh, let's get up here, I'm going to uh, Option scroll on this, I'm using my mouse scroll to end holding that Option and scrolling on my mouse to get close up to this window. And now I'm going to hit my V for my arrow tool, I'm going to grab this window, oops, 
I'm going to grab this uh, Y axis here and drag it down. By the way, if you hold down Shift, it does it a lot faster. I'm going to get this about dead center in the middle of that window there, and then I'm going to scale it until it's the proper size here. I'm just going to increase the scale here until it looks about the same size as the other windows. And I might even need to rotate that a little bit, which is fine. So down a little bit, right about there. Hit W for rotation. Oops, actually we're going to have to rotate it on the uh, y-axis there. Let's take a look. Let's go to the 3D camera tracker here. Actually up here in our effects controls. Oh wait, no. Nope, sorry. And go to our 3D camera tracker. Uh, right here, we got our Z rotation right there in our Y. So, yep, we're going to rotate it on the Y axis a little bit. Actually, that'll be a Z axis rotation right there. Duh. So, there we go. So, we rotate that a little bit, get it looking proper, uh, move it down, and there we go. And that is in position. So, now with that replacing the other window, watch this as we play through it. Let me deselect that. That window locks on and looks like it is part of that plane there, which looks really, really good. Looks nearly perfect there. And it tracks the whole way across, oops, and stays locked. So now all you have to do, once you get to that stage, all you have to do is you can go to the window here and we can do Command D or Control D on a Windows P on a PC. And it duplicates it. Uh, so now I've duplicated my window layer. And if you go up here and grab our X axis on that top layer and move it over, I'm going to hold down Shift to do it faster. Look at that. It duplicates and goes over the other window. But I've got a little problem here because this little crate there is kind of should be in front of the window and it's not blocking it out. We'll fix that in a minute. But I'm going to do the same thing. Go to the window, duplicate. I'm going to grab this, drag it over, and cover this window. You might have to change the size slightly as the perspective changes. Like this one looks like it needs to be a little bit smaller, which is fine. So I'm going to go down to my scale and change the size just slightly, bring it down as it gets further away, it's going to be smaller. So a little bit smaller, there we go. Go to the next window, duplicate, grab that, drag it over, and cover that window. And there we go. It looks like I need to do some shape replacements there, to, or shape some size changes there. But there we go, we've got all those windows, and you can rename these if you want to, if you want to keep track of it. Uh, you can go to the first window, name it like left window, or window one, just go window 1, then window 2, window 3, window 4, if you want to rename those to keep everything organized. It looks like I need to change the shape of these a little bit, but you get the idea. So we can actually just increase that a little bit there. And there we go. So those have all been replaced with those darkened windows. And now that you look at it, it looks quite obvious, but uh, really, I mean, how many people are going to look at this and notice that these windows have been photoshopped or After effects -ed? I guess. So now a couple issues we've got here. We've got this crate and we've got the door that is kind of blocking the view. And this is kind of some tedious work that you have to do here. So I'm going to do duplicate my command D, duplicate my bottom layer here. I'm going to drag it on top and that kind of overwrites uh, everything there. So it'll look like everything's kind of been deleted there. But uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to have to do some rotoscoping now. I'm going to come up to this window here. And on this top layer here, I'm going to go to our uh, pen tool. And I'm going to cut out this little portion of the door here. I'm going to click with my pen tool. I've got this layer selected. I'm going to click and drag, click and drag. And we're going to cover, it looks like just this portion of the door here is the only part that covers the window. I can't remember. I, I need to look at the shot. But, but uh, I'm going to come down here like this and grab because it's just this portion of the door up here that is covering the window. And boom, that cuts in. Now we're going to have to animate that. So what you're going to have to do is go down to Masks, select your mask here, and we're going to animate our mask path. And I'm going to do Shift Page Down, which does skip five, five frames at a time. I'm going to do that twice, so it does ten frames. And I'm going to grab my rotor spline here, and I'm going to reposition all the nodes. By the way, when this is all selected here, um, this is all selected. You just like that. You can just click away from one of the nodes, or and then click back on one of the nodes. And now one is selected. Now you can hit Command A to select all the nodes, and you can drag that back into place. And it's done that little animation here. This has kind of changed shape from the perspective. I'm going to do sh Shift Page Down twice, so it does 10 frames, and it's doing the interpolation between the frames. Once again, I clicked on one of these 
nodes. That node is selected. Now hit Command A and it selects everything. And I'm going to move that back into position, like right there. And you're going to have to continue that throughout the shot here. You notice now it's animating. And, and then you're going to have to go through and kind of fine tune, like right here. These frames in between need to be fine tuned a little bit. You might have to move individual nodes. And this is a little bit of a pain, but this is effect, effects work here. Kind of more corrective effects work than it is actual like special effects necessarily. But but uh, there we go. And now the door is in front of the window. You can go down to your mask feather, feather that off maybe about like three or four pixels, probably like four or five pixels actually since it's 4K footage. Soften up the edges a little bit, and there we go. So now you'll notice for the first part here, the door is covering as the camera starts to move. I could do a little bit better. You can see a little bit of the light bleeding through, but you get the idea. We can actually go down to our mask expansion and just shrink it in about like 10 pixels. Let's take that back like negative 10. Click in there and say negative 10, and it will suck in the mask a little bit. And now let's see if that light is still there on the door. Nope, looks pretty good. Looks like I got rid of that light. There's some of the light. Well, now that now my track is off right there. That's where I stopped tracking. So that part's done. Now you'll have to do the same part on... Uh, let me turn that top layer off because I'm not going to do the rest of the animation. Then I'll have to do the same thing on this crate over here. So once again, I'm going to rename this one here Door Roto. So I know that's the Door Rotoscope. And then I'm going to duplicate this again, drag it on top, and I'm going to make this one my Crate Roto. There we go. And now you're going to have to do the same thing. Once that crate comes in, let me move to where it's already in. Like right there. And I'm just going to click and drag a rotospline over that portion of the crate right there. That's just blocking into the window right there. So now, if you look at this, what I've cut out here is basically just that little chunk of the crate. So now we can animate that. Oops, I skipped past the part. Let's see. I'm going to go down to masks. Go down to my main mask here. And I'm going to turn on my animation for my mask path. Shift, page up, page up. And go a couple, uh, go about 10 frames down. Oops. And I'm going to grab this rotospline. All four nodes are already selected, so it's going to move. So you snap, I can get that position exactly where it needs to be. Right there. Shift, page up, page up, page up. I can go about 15 frames here. Reposition that, shift page up, page page up, reposition that, page up, page up, reposition that. This is an easy one here, it looks like. So uh, replacing the crate. So let's see what that looks like so far. And then you'll just do that till it's off screen, and uh, then then you're taken care of. So now uh, let's actually feather that a little bit. We'll do the same thing. We're going to mask feather this about like eight frames, and we're going to suck in the mask. We're going to go negative. Uh, like uh, six on the mask. We'll try that out, see how it looks. So it sucks the mask in about six pixels. That's a little too much there. Ooh, I got another Facebook notification. I am really popular. Like super popular. So I'm going to go negative four. There we go. I might need to adjust, readjust that thing. But then you play, and there you go. That crate is blocking the way of the window there. It's in front of the window again. That looks a little weird, but you get the idea. I need to fix my mask there, but... But uh, that's the idea. And right there, it starts coming off track. And uh, yeah, I need to expand my mask right there. I sucked it in too much. So. And there we go. And that, that is really about all there is to it. It's uh, doing the 3D camera track to put those objects in. Uh, this is kind of funky here. If you select one of these windows here. Uh, let me turn off my crate here. And uh, let's grab one of these windows here. And actually, I'm going to bring that more forward on the z-axis space. Uh, so I'm going to bring that more forward in space. Let's see if we can kind of figure out how to get this about out near these guys. So it will look like this free-floating window on the ground, like right above them, and it will track. So that just came more forward in space, and look at that. It's like still tracking. That's probably behind the vehicle still, so by the, the parallax, I'm guessing that's still behind the vehicle there. Let's move that even more forward. There we go. That's like out in front of the door there. So, so now it's like this free-floating window right there. And look where it is in space. It locks like right there floating in space. I mean, if you go, the camera is actually going to go past it here. See that? It moves on past it in 3D space. That's kind of trippy. So let's grab that. Actually move it a little bit more. 
There we go. Now watch what happens as the camera goes. It's going to go right up and past it just as if an object's just kind of sitting there free-floating in space. But it understands the space. It knows how far away it is from the car. And it moves past it. So kind of cool, kind of trippy. But it understands 3D camera space. So so there you go. Uh, now I'll actually play the clip from the movie so you can kind of see how it looked in the end. Uh, I think we did a little bit lazier job than uh, a lot of you guys could do, but it still looked pretty good. A lot of people watch it and they never notice and never know that those lights were turned at, were actually turned on during the shoot. So uh, here's the clip from the movie. Goodbye. How was the drive? Fine. Make some appearance stops. Yes, yes, I did, I did everything you asked me to do. Okay. Here. 